I made a wrong ass turn. <laughs> Let's talk about how to prepare a passenger for their very first motorcycle ride. Now, this is what I do every single time Nikki gets on the bike, okay? This is, this is what I do. Uh, let's go this way. This guy has a really badass car in front of me. All right, so first off, first off is that you need to have gear for your passenger, okay? There's no point in getting the passenger on the bike if you don't have gear. Make sure they have the appropriate size gear. My girlfriend, uh, she had gear, a little bit of gear when I first started getting her on the bike. She had at least a helmet, uh, my old gloves, uh, my old jacket, and then she just had some, a pair of boots and jeans. Now, I know those boots and jeans won't hold up. My jacket was too big for her, so it's still better than nothing. It had some armor, but I'm assuming that it's not gonna be in the right spots during a crash. The helmet as well was gonna protect her and her gloves were probably gonna fly off, but hopefully during that initial impact, they would have saved something. So you guys need to have the appropriate gear. And that's what I'm talking about is the appropriate gear, not hand-me-downs from you to another rider, unless you guys are the same size. Now you need to have the appropriate gear. So what we did was, we, right now we still have the same helmet, we're gonna get a new one. So it's one that matches and fits her better. Um, even though it does fit her pretty well, I modified it to where I got different cheek pads uh, so that it fit her face a little bit better. But we got her brand new gloves, we got her a brand new jacket, we got her motorcycle jeans that were kind of hard to find because <laughs> she's so short. And we got her some uh, really good CD motorcycle uh, women's boots that are really hard to find too because she has really small feet. I feel better about having her on the bike because if she doesn't have the appropriate gear and we do crash, why do I have the appropriate gear and she doesn't? She's crashing with me if I crash, so she needs it too. There's no point in having an airbag on the driver's side and no airbags for the passenger. Having seatbelts for the driver, no seatbelts for the passenger. Makes sense? Okay, next one. You need to do the, the pre-ride, pre preparatory <laughs> speech with that person. They need to understand the rules of the road. They need to understand the rules of, of a passenger. Now I've mentioned it to her many times and always, always, and it's very a bit, it's a very big thing for me. First off, I talk to her and I say, hey, listen to me. You need to be careful, you need to be safe, and you need to have fun. If you're not having fun, tap my shoulder, let me know, we'll stop, we'll, we'll be done. If you're, if you're anxious, we need to stop. We need to get off the road, we need to kind of settle down. I need to explain better. Along with that preparatory speech, you need to let her know that, you know, just kind of sit there. Just sit there. You're a sack of potatoes. If I'm leaning right, don't lean left. You know, just kind of mold your body and how your, like my position is. Try to, try to mimic my position. But basically be a sack of potatoes. If you have to move, do it when we're like on a straight line and, and just move briefly because there's been times where I have to remind her because she'll push really hard on that rear passenger peg and it, it does move the bike. It's almost like counter steering as a like a passenger's counter steering my bike. It's 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 kind of freaky sometimes, especially when you're trying to make a turn. They're basically in control. If they're not having fun and they want to get off, uh, it's gonna mess up your ride. Uh, and it's not gonna make it safe. So you need to have that preparatory speech. Now that you got the gear, now that you got the speech down, now they need to get on the bike. So number three is the mount. Okay. First off, you need to be flat footed on the ground. As the rider, get on the bike. Okay. Here we go. Let's, let's start over on that one. First off, you get on the bike. I've turned the bike on, I put it in neutral. I have my right uh, hand on the front brake and I have both feet planted, okay? At that point, I look around, I check, I double check both sides, okay? Passenger pegs are down, they're not up, they are down. Let's go right, let's, let's, get, let's go right. I don't wanna go home yet. At that point, you tell them, yes, you can get on the bike, okay? Have them approach, uh, for me personally, I like to have them on the side that doesn't have the exhaust. I don't want them getting on from the side with the exhaust. Just because um, if it is hot and you guys are like, you know, stopping and going at uh, certain places, like you go to a restaurant or something, oh, I'm in, in second gear. The exhaust can be hot, they might burn themselves. So just have them get over on the left side and then kind of be careful with their leg going across the seat and then hitting that peg. Make sure they get the peg. But before you even go and everything, you make sure that everything is settled. Be like, you okay, you good, you good? Okay, cool. Have them sit on the bike, feet on the pegs. And now we're gonna talk about holding. Now, so number four is that they need to hold you. Um, it's, there's a lot of memes out there about, you know, two guys uh, <laughs> holding each other on a motorcycle, but to be quite honest, that is the safest way to do it. Um, one thing that I've learned and read, and I try to practice with her, is that have one arm around you. Okay, I'm the passenger, or she's the passenger, this is her arm. Oh, we got a car behind me. I'll get in the right lane so they don't have to worry about me. Have her arm 
or his arm, whoever is your passenger, one arm around you, and then kind of this other arm, this other, I don't have cruise control, this other hand, either around you or just holding the gas tank. So that way on an acceleration, that, that one arm will hold you closer to the rider and won't let you fall off, okay? Now the other hand that is on the gas tank on the D cell when you're stopping, you are able to push against that and not like kind of bonk, you know, do the helmet tap <laughs> or uh, fall into the, the, the rider. So do this. Now we're gonna talk about getting off the bike. You don't want the person to get off the bike at intersections. You don't want the person to get off the bike unless you say so. You don't. You just don't want them getting off the bike unless there's permission from you, okay? Don't let them put their feet down at intersections. You hold up the bike. Have them keep their feet on the pegs. The bike is balanced in itself. All you have to do as a rider, since you know this, uh, when you're by yourself, is the bike will wanna stand, stand straight up. So all you have to do is kind of make minor adjustments while you're at a stoplight. Same thing when there's a passenger on the bike. Now the bike is just a little bit heavier. The bike still wants to, especially if the passenger is sitting straight up and down on the bike and not, you know, rocking back and forth, um, it will stay upright. So let them know that. Uh, but when they do want to dismount or when you want them to dismount and you get to where you need to go. So it's basically like reversing the operations when it comes to the mounting. Now there's two kind of things for when it comes to uh, parking and stuff. So we'll talk about the first scenario is that you got into your parking spot. You pull straight in, you're the one of those people that pull straight in and then you're good. Okay, so now what you do is you turn off the bike, you just turn it off and then at that point you put both feet down, hold the brake if you put it in neutral um, because you don't want the bike to move, but I'd still do it anyways. And then have them just like they got on, but reverse it. Now take the leg off and step off. Simple as that. Don't let them get off until you get until you get uh, both feet down and stabilize the bike. Now, if you're um, going to go ahead and back in to your spot, what you do is just you know just like you normally would, just like you normally would back in. You get to where you need to go, and then before you back in, because it's going to be extremely hard to back in with a passenger on the bike. Um, at least it is for me. I'll just have them do that, and then I'll back in. Um, without the passenger on the bike. It's a lot easier doing that. Okay guys, those are just five things to help prepare your passenger when it comes to the bike. And hopefully this will remind you as a rider that you need to go through this stuff, okay? So it's really your job, it's your responsibility to prepare the rider. Because a lot of times riders aren't people that, you know, typically ride. They don't do that. So you need to prepare them for maybe their first time riding, um, maybe their 10th time riding, or they haven't ridden um, as a passenger on a motorcycle in years and they just ha they just forgot so that's your job to prepare them It's your job to educate them about that. But guys if you like this click that subscribe button um, There's a <laughs> there's a notification bell uh, right next to it. I'm having too much fun with this uh, When you click that you are notified every single time I post a video and you'll be part of the notification squad guys It helps out so much. I love it when you do that. I love seeing the comments below saying you're part of the notification squad and with that, said, with that said, I'll see you guys later. You be safe, you ride safe, and have a wonderful day.